Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Somebody say, but for the glory of God. God. That the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? And if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then the disciple says, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad, somebody say, I am glad. I am glad. Ooh, for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, he will give it to you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes. She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. And when she said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, she's going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, and she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb, and a cave, and a stone laid against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench. For he's been dead for days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? They took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you 
that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And many of the Jews who had come to Mary had seen these things. Jesus did believe in him. But some of them went away. Some of them had, some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things that he did. <laughs> Ooh. God bless the reading of his word. God bless the reading of his word. Somebody say, when Jesus loves me. When Jesus loves me. Time matters. And then there are matters of time. Uh, I want to start out by just giving an illustration uh, that will make this kind of clear. And I want to use the illustration of a bill that comes in the mail. Power bill. The bill in itself tells you that some money needs to be paid. But what makes it a matter of time is one line called the due date. It's not just a time of matter, it's a matter of time also. It's, it's a time matter because the bill is a tangible thing. It's a matter. It's an issue. It's something, it's a noun. It's something that has to be dealt with. But it matters how you deal with it. Uh, it, it matters how you respect it because if you don't adhere to the due date, then there's other matters that will ensue, yes. such as lights going out, no heat. It becomes crucial then that you get that bill paid by the due date if you don't make arrangements. Of getting cut off. It's not a pleasant experience. I, I, I can remember when we were living in LA before we had these phones that you could do all this business on your phone. We had to get to the office by five. If you got there by five and you got in that line, there, that's all right because they locked the door, but you were in there. You can still conduct your business, but if you got there after they locked that door and that was the due date or the date you said you'd be there, stuff was going to get cut off because it's a matter of time and time matters. This story often haunts me. I never really looked at it in the matter in the in the context of our theme this year that time matters, but it mattered to two sisters. Two sisters who had a brother, and Jesus loved them. Not in the sense that God so loved the world, he was friends with them. He spent time in their home. He spent time eating at their table. He 
he loved them. He had a personal relationship with them. They knew it. They felt it. And it is borne out in the fact that both sisters, when they encounter Jesus, say the same identical thing. Lord, if you would have been here on time, my brother would not have died. Because we know you know how to fix things. In that statement was disappointment. In that statement was grief. In that statement was misunderstanding and confusion and frustration. Have you ever been there? Frustrated. Upset. Let down. Disappointed. Feeling as if I'm being picked out to be picked And I, I, 
I'm trying to make sense out of it. Because I know you love us. And you're out here healing everybody else. That you don't, as far as we know, even know. These strangers on the street. You ain't been to their house, they ain't cooked you no meal. They ain't washed your feet. But we, the ones you love, have to deal with this situation because you weren't here. You got the message, but you didn't come. Now, listen, listen. All that is not in the scripture that that came out their mouth. Yeah. But just the statement, if you would have been here. That's right. That's right. That's right. My brother, how do you know one statement can be so loaded? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know some, some of y'all that want to avoid arguments at work mm -hmm. or at home. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. There's, there's, there's certain triggers, trigger words. And sometimes in response to the triggering word, all you get is a There's a whole lot in that. Sometimes it's Because the alternative to the little run, to the little moan, sometimes, sometimes we ought to thank the Lord. That all it was was a little grunt. But Jesus is not affected as much as we may think about the things that disappoint us. Because it's, or put it this way, it's not because he doesn't care. It's because there's a greater issue in his mind than our temporary Frustration or disappointment. All of us one day are going to die. And that's one thing that they accept. He died. You weren't here. It's expired. The time to fix it has expired. He's good and dead. According to the law, he's good and dead. Three days have passed. We're now on the fourth day. He's gone. How do you, how do we handle the disappointments and the frustrations? When God looks like he should have been there and then things went from bad to worse. Feel isolated. I feel separated. I feel isolated. I feel alone. I feel by myself. I need clarification. There's a conversation that happens. Listen, listen. Do, 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 you, do you know that uh, uh, he will rise again. I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection, but I won't be now. I am the resurrection. Now, see, he gives this information to his disciples. What is it? He whom thou loves is sick. And Jesus, seemingly unbothered by it, stays two 
more days. Of showing who he loves by 
receiving it right now. I know, I know, I know somebody came here and we're wondering, should I go, should I go to her? What am I going? What am I going to do? But, but see, there's something that whole, somebody, the old folks had a hill. So something within me that holds the reins. Something within me that banishes pain. Something within me I can't always explain. All that I know is there's something within that, that that something within will cause you to push when you would have given up one thing my pastor told me when, when before we moved to Cleveland and I went on my first pastor uh, first pastorate there uh, well, Pastor Carmen and I went, went out to dinner with, with Bishop Green and he was just pouring into us and sharing with us uh, this was another private moment that I had with him in his office uh, before we were sent out. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and he looked at me and he said, Jeff, you're going to be all right. He said, I'm not, I'm not worried at all. You're going to be all right. He said, yeah, you got a mouth. <laughs> oh, he knew me. He said, you, you got a mouth and, 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 and he said, and, and you're going to be a, a wonderful, but God has given you a glorious ministry. He said, but the reason I know that you're, you're going to be all right is because after you say all you got to say, in the end, you listen to what the Holy Ghost says. And that's why you're going to be all right. You can say, I ain't doing this no more. I quit. I, I, I all that. But he said, but in the end, you listen to the Holy Ghost. And that's why you're going to be all right. You see, all of us have these conversations in our head. Shall I? Shall I not? Am I? Am I not? I'm finished. I'm done. We've said it. Oh, how many times have we resigned? One time, I, 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 I told Pastor Reed, I said, it just seems like you, you're so strong in the Lord. And, you know, anybody that knew him, he, he, the, his, just his presence and his voice, and you would think he didn't have a problem in the world. It just, uh, just, uh, just, just strong all the time. He looked at me. He said, he said, please. He said, I've resigned the First Church of God a thousand times. He said, I can't, I, he said, I can't tell you how many resignation letters I've written. And then had to throw them in the trash. Because when Jesus loves you, you don't have some life experiences. Where he proves just how much he loves you. And while living through it, you may experience some irreconcilable events. Feel isolated because you're understanding is darkened and you don't have light so there's no illumination. You're in the dark. Have you ever felt like you were in the dark? And left with an impression. Those that are taking notes, I've just deliberated a whole bunch of eyes right there. Irreconcilable. Isolation. Illumination and impression. Yeah. Yeah. I'm left with an impression. What's an impression? An effect, a feeling, an image that I retain in my head as the result of an experience. I've experienced something that has left an impression on me. Jesus was late. That's the impression that I'm left with right now in the scripture. That's what the two sisters. 
because that's the impression they're left with. Jesus was late. Not just late, but too late. It's one thing to be late, yeah. but it's another thing to be too late. Too late. Yeah, I was late because I said I'd be there by 3. You close at 5, I got there at 4.59. Too late. I, 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 I was late, but I still made it because I got there one minute. But if it was 5.02, I'm too late. I've missed the window of opportunity. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm left with an impression that nothing can be done to fix it. Ooh. And that's exactly where the enemy wants to torture your mind. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many people go through life miserable because they think that time has left, but you're still, time, the time to fix things has expired, but you're still alive. So you have to live in misery. It's too late. So now I gotta make the best of it with this impression that I got left by the one I I love. And the one that loves me didn't get there in time. But what I want to get you to consider is that when he loves me, he involves me. He involves me as a participant in his plan. Mm. I don't always like being a participant because it's not like the price is right when they called my name and I ran down the aisle thinking I was going to get a good prize. Right. Hey Jeff, come on down! No, I ain't volunteering for that. I got drafted in as a participant to be involved and I didn't even agree to it. But that's the way God works, Shante. Sometimes he involves me to participate as an actor in his plan to promote his glory. And he doesn't give me all the particulars. So sometimes I gotta look like what I'm not so that I can be exposed for who I truly am. Sometimes I gotta look like the loser. Look like the one that was forsaken. Look like the one that was forgotten. Look like the one who's weak look like Jesus on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. All along, exactly where I need to be My God. and who I need to be. And if I suffer with him, yeah. I'll also reign with him. No matter how well I've planned, mm -hmm. no matter how well I've prepared, 
no matter who's subsidizing me and told me they got my back, I have lived long enough to know personally and watching and observing others that you ain't in control of nothing. Because there's too many variables that are unknown that get dropped in the mix. And no matter how well you plan, something can happen and the wheels fall off your wagon. An extended period of sickness. That's right. The death of a pillar of support in your life. Go to work one day and padlock on the door. Right. And so that happened in Cleveland. Yeah. Big, big restaurant chain. Mm -hmm. Didn't tell the employees nothing. They came to work, everything's padlocked. That's right. That was it. That was it. The point of the matter is, is that Jesus has a bigger plan. He's macro. Come on. We're micro. He's, he's overarching. He's supervision. He's overseer. It's important to see ourselves as involved, as participants, not only in our life's journey, but the deliverance of others. Jesus goes to the grave. Take that stone away. You can't do that, Lord. You've been in there four days now. Surely he's thinking. Didn't I tell you? You would believe you'd see the glory of God? They rolled stone away. And he calls his name. He talks to a dead thing. Talks to something that has been gone. Seemingly unretrievable. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
Jesus. Jesus. You see, the plan of God for those that he loves never just includes just you. And I'm preaching to be taught today a very specific word because this goes in with our thing. Not just our thing, but who we are as a congregation. Bringing you help healing and wholeness through the love of Jesus Christ. Y'all want to help me? I'm, I'm, I'm about to put something together real special for you. He calls Lazarus out and he comes out bound. But he's out. He's up. He's alive. He's all wrapped up. Tied up, tangled up. Face covered up. The, the, the wrapping smells like a 40-year-old body has been wrapped in it. And Lazarus comes forth. And then Jesus shows the glory of God in his coming forth. But then tells the people, you loose him and let him go. You cut those bandages off. You cut those gray clothes off him. You do the work of getting him unbound. He's been made alive, but you got to lose him. I love that man and his sisters enough to bring them and involve them in participants as participants in an act of the glory of God on display. Be top. God has called some folks' names to bring them from death to life. Some of them are still bad. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And it's our responsibility to lose them and let them go. God is still calling folks from death. the grips of hell, from the grips of death, he's still uh, making folk who are outside, calling them in to the place of safety. But some of them are still down. And he says, you lose some and let him go. That's just not for the person that's without. There's some folk that might even be in here or listening on the live stream who need to be loosed and let go. You've heard a voice of God calling your name. You've done your best to get out of what you're in. You've come as far as you can without tripping over your own feet. But now you need somebody to lose you. You need somebody to give you some care. And that's why last week I was talking about God calling people up. Because Jesus will call the name, but he ain't cutting off grave clothes. He'll make a lie, but then we got to do the other one. And the church has been so mired in being trendy. And
doesn't matter. I love being on live stream, but nothing can take the place of losing people and letting them go. And the only way that can happen is to get close contact with them. You can't do it any other way. And I don't care how long it takes at this point. I know God's going to make a way for everything that needs to be done to be done up in here. Because the glory of God is at stake. But just maybe God is extending the time we got to wait on purpose. So that the glory of God can be revealed. You know, I, I wanted God to show up a couple years ago. When he gave us the money for the church, give us the money for everything else. Yes. Just, just drop it on us, God. Yes. Open up a window, pour out a blessing. Yes. Can't you do it all at once? Why are you waiting? Why the delay? Don't you love me? You say you love me. Have you ever asked us questions like that? But just be comforted by this. He does love you. He loves you enough sometimes to linger. Because there's more to the story than you. And whatever part I have to play in the glory of God being revealed, here I am, Lord. So, if we're going to lose people, we got to get close. We got to care. We got to cut and unwrap anything that is binding. We got to ignore critics. Somebody said, get close. You can't help people and show them the love of God at arm's length. You got to care Amen. about more than yourself. That's right. You have to be willing to unwrap stinky things. Yeah. You got to ignore. Can you imagine witnessing that? Some believed, and then there were some critics after watching that. Who all they wanted to do was go blabbermouth to the Pharisees. They could not participate in the glory. All they could do was be negative. And I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter how God blesses you, how he makes ways for you. The miracles that he does in your life. There's going to be a group of people that have no appreciation for what God does in your life. So you got to learn how to celebrate for yourself. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You got to learn to know. That there's some folk that ain't gonna be happy no matter what. No matter what great thing God does in your life. Look, listen, listen, listen. There's somebody that can't even appreciate the journey of where you were five years ago to where you are today. If you tell them to say, oh, that's nice, that's nice. But it is more than just nice. There's somebody who just a few years ago was saying, God get me out of Buddha. And now you're out. And you not yet even properly celebrated what you're out of from five years ago. Because you were on to the next. But I want you to see the happiness on Mary and Martha's face. 
Because that's more important than any critic that doesn't understand. I wish there was a few folk in here that were a part, that are going to be a part of the celebration crew and not the critical crew. I hope Big Top is filled with celebrants and not critics. I need to be surrounded by some folk that are going to celebrate the coming out party of those who God has fixed and touched and resurrected to new life. Is there something, is there something noteworthy and is there something praiseworthy about saying, God, I'm going to rejoice in the fact that you've got a voice that can call folk from death to life and then give to me the ministry of losing them and letting them go. If I had to go through some temporary disappointment and some temporary discomfort and some temporary pain for that process to unfold, oh God, I'll accept that. Because if you love me like that, then that means there's a whole lot more experiences to come. So I'll just get used to you loving me that way. Loving me enough to include me in your plan. Loving me enough to look past my tears, my frustration, my fainting fits, and still show up at the grave and do your thing. Hear my grief. Hear my disappointment. Hear, oh my God, even my anger. And still show up. Because the glory of God trumps how I feel. God ain't playing about his glory. You think your temper tantrum is going to delay him from deciding to get his glory? If he didn't get Jesus off the cross, when he said, Why have you forsaken me? That's good, Pastor. That's so good. So good. Good analogy. It had to go down. Because on the other side of it is the glory. Oh, it's 1228. So, if it had to go down, so that the glory could get up, I guess I might as well just start praising God right now because the things that were written before time were written for my learning that through patience and comfort of the scriptures I might have hope so let me get on this train right now and start praising God no matter what happens because the end of the result is that God's going to give his glory Is gonna get up, go home, and be a testimony. You can tell whoever you want to tell. Because the Pharisees can come shake it out too. Because how are you gonna argue with what God did? It speaks for itself. And that's the day that's coming for some of y'all. You won't be able to not have to open your mouth and say one word. Because when they see the dead thing living, it will have spoken for itself. The testimony will not even need to be questioned because it's going to be visible and conspicuous. Let me just praise it one more time with me. 
again. He loves me. Past my frustrating moments. Yeah, he loves me. Past my faints and fits. He, he loves me. Even after I tempt from him, he loves me. Even, even after I've been so disappointed, I wonder why could he let me leave me like that. But now I see. Now I understand. And if you're there right now, praise him on credit. Praise him in advance. Just like you put that credit card up yesterday on Amazon Prime. Knowing you're going to pay for it two months from now. You got the thing now, and you're going to pay for it later. Yeah. But I'm telling you, praise him now, because he's delivering it later. And the delay is not a denial. Somebody, I need somebody to praise him right now. If God has blessed you to see it differently, how do I know God loves me? This is how I know he favors me. At the end of the day, the enemy
Somebody going to say, I thank you, Lord, I'm a new creature. A new creation in you. And there's nothing that happens in my life that you don't reign over. Nothing happening in my life that you don't supervise. He's the supervisor of my life. He's the overseer. And he knows what I need when I need it. Oh, this is how you're going to do me and when you love me? Yeah, you got a mixed up idea of what love is. Love is not always warm and fuzzy. Sometimes it's feeling like you're forsaken. Sometimes it's feeling like God was late. Sometimes you have to trust him with tears in your eyes. Did you hear what I said? Sometimes you gotta trust him with tears in your eyes. Sometimes, sometimes. You, you gotta trust him with tears. Tears that tell a story. Yes, it is a story. I don't, I don't understand. Yes. Yeah. This, 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 this looks like we've all the six verses to the same song. How many more verses does this song have? Right. How many? That's good. That's good, Pastor. Yes. That one verse, verse 35. Whew. Two words. Jesus wept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he cared about how those sisters felt. He did. But he knew there was a greater glory coming. Yes. But that two word verse, Jesus wept. See, that verse comes after he soaked in the whole feeling in atmosphere around that grave. Yes, sir. The disappointment, the weight of grief and loss. We don't have a high priest that can't be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. I don't want to sound callous when I say Jesus loves you so he just let you go. No, no, it's not that he doesn't care. He went because he's acquainted with grief. He, he's acquainted with that human experience. He felt the room, as it were. He felt what was going on in the atmosphere. And he went. Because he was, he was God, but he was also man. So he can be touched with the weight. So he knows how it feels. But he says, I am the resurrection and the life. So I know how it feels, but I also know how to turn the page. See, you know how it feels and you're left there. You're stuck there. He ain't stuck. I 
I'm saying that if I got trust in through tears, I'll do it.
kept me with the state in it, but I would have gotten out of it. Ooh, that was, that was a word, Pastor. That was a word. And it was a much easier We have many things going on right now within our church. We have many things that need to be done. So I'm just reminding you that if you brought your school supplies, please leave them back in the sound room. Saturday is the bazaar. Come out, meet the people, share the love of Christ with the people that will be coming out. Remember to invite your own family. Anyone is welcome to come and get a backpack. Okay, so anyone's welcome. So make sure you let your folks know. Come on out to the church. All right, come on out and celebrate. Come on out and have a good time. Um, if you want to donate online, you can. Um, she said Thursday or Friday, so Kayla said whatever they don't have, then they'll purchase. So, you can. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you that are online with us, we'll see you next week. God bless you and have a great week.